Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God with Salami Energy Harina, your host. We are glad to have you today. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and this commentary intends to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Thursday, the 9th day of March 2023, and our topic for today is In His Presence. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we worship your name. We are grateful for such an awesome time again before you. We thank you for your word that is set before us to bless us one more time. We acknowledge our need and our desire for you. We ask that you would fill us up. Teach us your word today and help us also to be inhabitants of your presence. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Psalm 16 verse 11. Psalm 16 verse 11 reads, Thou wilt shew me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16 verse 11. And our text for today is from the book of Psalm 24 from verse 3 to 6. Psalm 24 from verse 3 to 6 reads, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Psalm 24 from verse 3 to 6. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, our topic for today is in his presence. And we have our Father and the Lord say to us today that the presence of the Most High God is the best place anyone can be in. Those who spend time in his presence are always in control of life situations rather than the other way around. Elijah was just coming from the presence of God in 1 Kings chapter 17 when he commanded that there should be no rain or dew for three years. And it was so. If you want to be in control, then what you really need is to be in God's presence. It is a good thing we have the criteria required for you to be in God's presence listed in our Bible reading for today. They are as follows. Number one, you must have clean hands. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17, God said, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You have to be careful what you touch with your hands. I have always told my children to be careful what they sign. If a report is wrong or misleading, don't append your signature. Don't steal. Don't manipulate reports. Watch what your hand touches. Number two, your heart must be pure. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Be careful of what you let into your heart and what you meditate upon if you truly want to dwell in his presence. Number three, your heart must not be lifted up to vanity. Colossians 3 verse 1 to 3 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. You must regularly check what motivates you to do what you do. Are you driven by material or spiritual things? 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 says, You should not love the world or things of the world. That if you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. Number 4. You must not be a liar. Revelation chapter 22 verse 15 made it clear. For without are dogs and sorcerers, and warmongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. If you are a liar, or someone who takes part in the benefits of other people's lies, God will keep you outside his presence. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more is in his presence. The psalmist in Psalm 51 verse 11 said, Cast me not away from thy presence. This was a heartfelt cry. And that was because he understood the danger of staying outside of his presence. Our memory verse for today tells us that in his presence, we find fullness of joy. It also says that at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. The flip side of this would mean that outside of his presence would be the absence of joy. It would be full of confusion, the absence of peace, full of troubles, worries and a lack of fulfillment. Praise God. Now, every well-thinking man would definitely want to enjoy the benefits of his presence. However, we learn from our study today that there are requirements to be in his presence. And this we find in our text for today in Psalm 24 from verse 3 to 6. The first requirement is that we must have clean hands. And our Father and the Lord explains to us today the need to ensure that we do not soil our hands by the things that we do. When we talk about clean hands, we do not necessarily refer to the physical cleanliness of the hands. There are so many things that we could do administratively that could soil our hands. We are told in our study today, for example, that we must ensure not to sign wrong or misleading reports. We are told to ensure not to steal. You know it is easier to do so by signing just one document or by simply adding an extra zero to an amount. It may feel like a smart thing to do, but we learn from our study today that this can soil our hands and eventually make us lose our place in his presence. It is important also that we address all forms of evil by their names. Address them by what it is. Do not call the altering or the changing of figures as smartness. Call it stealing and let he who does so not be celebrated. Let him be called a thief. Hallelujah! The second requirement to be in God's presence, we are told today, is to have pure hearts. We live in a generation where we have so much information at our disposal. And as this grows, the enemy is also trying by all means to ensure that people find it much more easier to sin. So many hearts are corrupt today because of the things that they see on social media and the internet, the kind of things that they dwell upon. Today's study reveals to us that we have the responsibility to ensure that our hearts are kept pure. This means we must be intentional and we must trust God also for the grace to keep pure hearts. Philippians 4 verse 8 tells us, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Hallelujah! We must also trust God to ensure that we do not only act to have pure hearts before the eyes of men, that even in our secret places, our hearts would be pure indeed in Jesus' name. The third requirement in our study today tells us that our hearts must not be lifted up to vanity. James chapter 4 verse 4 tells us that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Now the big question is, who wants God as an enemy? That scripture continues to tell us that whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you prioritize the things of the world, then you automatically give them the priority place. And you cannot be a candidate of God's presence that way. The fourth requirement to be in God's presence tells us that you must not be a liar. A liar is a deceiver. A liar is not trustworthy. You cannot take his word for it. He tries to cheat. He tries to manipulate. He tries to play what those in the world would call smartness. He would do anything just to make unjust profits. A liar is classified according to Revelation chapter 22 verse 15 as being in the same class with sorcerers, warmongers, murderers and idolaters. And our Father and the Lord makes us understand from today's study that not only will telling lies rob a man of God's presence, being a partaker also of the benefits of other people's lies would also do the same. So we must ask ourselves today sincere questions. Are we lying or being deceptive in any way? We may say no, we are not. But are we beneficiaries of the same? Have we refused to steal, yet enjoy the proceeds of theft? May God help us in Jesus' name. 
in Exodus chapter 33 verse 15, Moses understood the importance of God's presence. Hence he said, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. In verse 16 he says, For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? He says, Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. In other words, God's presence is able to distinguish us from all others. It is able to set us apart from every other person. Hallelujah. In verse 14, the Lord said unto him, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Do we have those who are desirous of God's presence, those who want to enjoy his rest? those who are prepared to enjoy the fullness of joy and his pleasures forevermore. Can we ask the Lord today, say, Father, please cleanse our hands, that whatever wrong things we may have engaged our hands in, the Lord himself would have mercy. He would cleanse our hands today, blotting out every filth in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today for the grace to stand out for him, the grace to represent him wherever we go, the grace not to indulge our hands in things that would not glorify him. Can we ask the Lord also today for a pure heart that He will grant us the grace to dwell upon the right things, the grace to dwell upon things of good report He will grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Ask Him that our hearts would not stray away into the wrong places. Our hearts would be guided by His Spirit in the name of Jesus. Also ask the Lord today that our hearts would not be lifted up to vanity, that we would not love the things of the world at the expense of setting our hearts upon things above in the name of Jesus. Ask him that we would not be driven by material things instead of the spiritual. Ask him that we would be filled with the love of the Father and not the love for the things of the world. In Jesus' name, ask the Lord also today for the grace not to be a liar, the grace not to be a deceiver, the grace not to be a cheat. In Jesus' name, ask him that we would always represent the truth everywhere we find ourselves. Ask the Lord today for the grace and the boldness also to do so without fear. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our dear Father, we thank you for this word today. We are grateful because we know that your presence is all that we need to make the difference. We ask that you grant us the grace today that we would dwell in your presence all the days of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a reflection in our study today that asks us, based on the list discussed today, are you qualified to be in God's presence? If not, make amends today. We are encouraged to take out our time to meditate upon today's study, to be sincere to ourselves and to trust the Lord to make amends where necessary. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Joshua chapter 14 down to chapter 17. Hallelujah! We also want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. The Lord bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, Please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 10 of our Open Heavens devotional. We would be singing in Christ alone. Have a lovely day ahead dwelling in God's presence. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. God bless you and bye for now. I believe you enjoyed today's devotional. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly leave a comment. You can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached. God bless you. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.